you've had a good bit of time now to reflect on the first leg in Athens. What pleased you most about that game and what areas do you want to see an improvement in the second leg? I was very pleased um, with the performance in general, apart from the first 10 minutes when we had some issues to control defensively in the final set some situations and as well when we gave the ball away in, in difficult areas when we could progress our play and become dangerous but apart from that the team played with a lot of personality in a very difficult stadium against a good opponent with a great records in their own stadium and we managed to score and win the goal which is a, a positive thing too. We saw you in Greece, you scored your second goal in two games. I just want to ask you about the goal against Newcastle though. It seemed to mean a lot to you and how much does it mean to you the celebrations with your teammates? They all came up to you, didn't they? Um, I really enjoy my goal against Newcastle because uh, it was a long time I didn't score. And obviously the way my teammates celebrate with me uh, show uh, the mentality we are we have now in the group. So. It's only positive things about his goal. Um, first of all, can we have an update on Kolasinac? I know the club has had a significant, but you expect him to be without him for, for a long period of time. He's seen the specialist today. We will know more this afternoon, but um, yeah, he was in pain. It's a difficult area, and uh, we are not very positive about it. Do you think you'll see him again this season? Or? Hopefully, yes. Uh, I don't know. Depending whether he's dislocated it, if he needs surgery or not, we will know more this afternoon, hopefully. Um, this competition is a good path towards qualifying for the Champions League. Do you still see a route to qualifying for the Champions League in, by the Premier League as well? And, and does that maybe influence what sort of team you'll pick going through this competition? No, this team selection is based on what I see in training the load of the players and uh, what we want to do against the opponent. Um, we have three different routes to reach to Europe. We have to try to maximize the three of them and we go game by game. It's the only thing we can do at the moment because the objective is still so far behind. Do you still see, do you see that um, the way things are competing in the Premier League at the moment, and that's a real path for you though, do you, do you think, even though you're in ninth place at the moment? We need to win a lot of games. We need to put on a very consistent run together and we just won two games, which is not enough. Alexander, can I ask you, there have been reports um, this morning saying that you've got an agreement with the club that if Arsenal don't qualify for the Champions League, then you'll be leaving or you're free to go. Um, is that in your mind at the moment, or would, if Arsenal were to qualify for the Champions League? I didn't know about this, so... Do you know where that report has, has come no, from? No, I don't that? know. So as far as you're concerned, you staying at the club isn't contingent on Arsenal qualifying for the Champions League next season? Yeah, I have a contract with the club, so there is like no point for me to, to leave if everybody is happy with me in the club. Okay. Okay, we've won, you've won last three games in a row, two in the Premier League and then last week in Greece. How would you assess how things are going in terms of your, your time here the, in the first couple of months you've been in now? Two months, three months. Well, a lot of things happen in two months, obviously, in uh, many different areas of the club. Um, I think the team is progressing well. I think the club is looking in a better place. I think um, we are getting much more unity on the sections of the club and as well a great energy back from the fans every time we're playing at the Emirates and away from the Emirates. So it's a lot of positive things, but there's still a lot of things to do, a lot of things to improve individual, collectively, and as a club, and uh, we are in that process at the moment. As things stand right now at the moment, since the winter break for the for the, uh, the Champions League, Spurs and Chelsea have suffered bad results. I know that United and yourself and Wolves won in Europe last week, but is it, is it, has it been hard for the English clubs to get going again after that break from the group stages? After how condensed the calendar is in December and January, normally when you get to February, you will start to suffer and pay the price and normally after the international break in March teams are fresher again to, to get back uh, at the end of the season. It's part of the process, it's uh, what this league is so demanding and so nice as well to play because you have so many games, but uh, yeah, physically it's, it's tough. 
Alex, what's it like playing with the, the young players in the squad? Because the squad has got a lot of youth in it now. Saka and Enketia combined the other day for a goal. Uh, we've seen Joe Willett, we've seen Lewis <coughs> Nelson. It's nice, it's good for, for the club, for the team. Uh, that means there is a lot of quality in the, the academy. Uh, obviously, they, they have to improve because they are young, but they are listening, so it's, it's good for us. And finally, for me, you spoke about your contract situation. You're happy at the club. How important is it that the club keep hold of uh, Pierre and Bigot Bonnier? It's uh, really important. He's one of the best, or maybe the best, this season for Arsenal. So, obviously, I hope he's going to stay longer, long for, for the club. Alex, can you? Can you, can you talk to us about how does it feel when, when you cost a lot of money and you're expected to score but the goals don't come and, and who helps you through this? Who, who helps you turn it around? Mm, the coach, my teammates as well because obviously uh, I'm a striker but I'm not here only to, to score goals. I have to help the team to, to defend and to build uh, the game. So. Um, oh, for me, it's, it's not the, the best part when I'm not scoring, but it is not only this. Do you feel the pressure or does it not affect you? There is a pressure, but it's not more about me because I want to score and I want to help my team, but it's not about the pressure of my, my transfer. Is it harder for maybe someone like Nicolas Pepe because he's so young and expected to score, but he's got <coughs> a bit more experience? Do you think it's hard for him to deal with those expectations? No, because he just came in the league and obvious, yes, he wants to, to score to help the team, but he knows he needs uh, time to to adapt to the league and the team. So now I think he's feeling better uh, on the pitch and uh, it's good. Darren? Uh, can you talk about Saka? Because he, he provided a <coughs> win over Newcastle and he provided the assist for your goal last week against Valenciaco. Talk about his composure. I think he's got nine assists this season, and the importance and, and how you rate him as, as a player who's able to provide those assists. He's really good. I think he's maybe the best young player in the league. Um, like I said, he need to improve in few few things, but we can see the quality he has and uh, and his handball. This is the best thing I think for him. He's really handball. He he wants to work, he accepts the critique because he wants to improve. Can you can just elaborate on what makes him the best? Because there are some exceptional players, Mason Greenwood, for example, some, you know, some really good players in this league. What makes him stand out for you? For him? Yeah, what makes him stand out amongst the other young players? Uh, well, it's simple, his quality. He's got a good uh, left foot and because he's on ball, it's easier for him to, to improve. Any more questions for Alex? Yeah. Oh. Um, when you were on your goal drop, do you think people kind of forgot about <coughs> the other qualities to your game aside from just scoring goals? A lot of people can talk. Uh, there is always something to say, so I don't really think about this. Uh, if the manager, the coach, my teammates are happy with me, this is a most important thing. We, we know you've got a very good relationship with Halber, and people talk about it all the time, but do you think people have really appreciate just how good he is? When you look at his scoring record over, over the years, it's a phenomenal record, but no one sort of talks about him as like Aguero or, or these sorts of players. Do you think he's as good as anything around? I think, yeah, people should talk more about Oba and what he's doing in the, in the game because he's more than a goal scorer. He's working a lot for, for the team defensively, uh, making space... Uh, for the striker, AD or me, and uh, I just think if we start to win trophy, we're gonna talk more about what he's doing for the team. Okay, last one for Laka. Has, has this maybe been one of the most difficult seasons or the most difficult of your career? Because a lot has happened. You haven't always started games. You've not always scored goals, and previously you've been so consistent. Um, has it been hard for you? Mm. Not, I would say difficult, but as well is with this kind of um, moment we improve a lot uh, mentally and we yeah keep uh, now big confidence because if I, 
I went through this, I know I can be better now. Okay, thanks, Laka. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next scenario is embargoed until 10.30 tonight. Paul McHale. Can I ask you the same question about Albert? Because, again, people don't talk about him as one of the great strikers, but the record he's got at Arsenal is, is pretty special, isn't it? I think they do talk, but obviously with players, top players that are playing at clubs that are winning constantly, there is more impact on that, but we all know how good Oba is, is remarkable how he's doing and how consistent he's been over the years to do it, which is very, very difficult to do. So I think we all appreciate at least at the club his value and, and what he brings to us. Because you very rarely play through the middle, hmm. which is maybe even more considering his scoring record than most of the time out on the left. Hmm. With the players we have at the moment, we have to try to put a team that has goal. Our goal threat is high. To do that, if I play up there, then I don't play Laka, then why you don't play the two together, they can score both goals. There's always positives and negatives. I just try to find the right balance. And uh, players that can generate chemistry between them, and, um, and that's where I made the decisions. Gary Neville said this week, talking about this, August, he said, he, he said he's not mentioned as world class, we don't mention him as a Premier League great, and I think we have to. Do you think the reason that maybe pundits and, and wider people outside Arsenal don't, don't talk is just because he's been playing in a struggling side, we haven't been competing at the top, haven't been winning trophies while he's here? Do you think that's the only reason? Well, I think if, if he would have been a top scorer of the league and won the league, he would have been voted the best player in the league, for sure. But you need both. You need the individual performance and you need the collective side as well of your team and club to support that. And, um, and that's what we have to make a step forward to try to convince these top players to want to stay at our club, be successful and be happy. Just on that contract, would you prefer now, because we know there's no talks going on at the moment, would you prefer that that happens in the summer rather than now just to keep his focus on football? Uh, the club has a, a very clear idea of how the, he wants to develop things. They are in constant communication with players' agents and they know the plan better than I do, and I completely trust them on that. Nico, can I just ask about um, Fern Leno? You played him last week in the Europa League, whereas in the past, managers here have rotated their goalkeepers for that competition. I think you made a few good saves last week and also on Sunday. Have you been impressed, maybe even surprised, by just how good he is since you came in? Yeah, I've been really pleased with um, his performances. I've been really pleased with the person that uh, I'm getting to, to know, how professional he is as well. And, um, and yeah, the club was playing four competition. One of the goalkeepers was playing three and Ben was playing one. And I wanted a little bit more balance at the moment. And, um, and that's it, when Ben at the moment is the number one, if Emi oversteps you know, and he starts to perform better, he will be number one. And whoever I think that is better to play, he will play. Can I ask how important that is regarding the goalkeepers having a different number one or a floating number one because we saw last night at Chelsea again that the guy they bought in for over 70 million pounds is on the bench yeah. and the 39 year olds are playing and people are not sure who the number one is but the goalkeeper do you, if you have a number one at the start of the season are you almost or at the start of your campaign do you always have to stay with that I think that position is evolving as the rest of the game is evolving and other positions are evolving too before it was just one and he used to play 50 games and the other one used to <laughs> never play. I think at the moment managers are more flexible. I think the competition is better. It's not that big difference between number one and two, which is great for competition and for them to improve and challenge themselves. And that, I think, is the reason why. Can I ask about Joe Willock? He, um, he uh, well, obviously started last week, but he's, he's been in and out of the Premier League team this season. He's, He's got that gift, hasn't he, for driving forward with the ball and really eating up the space. Mm. But maybe other parts of the, of the game are inconsistent. Is that number 10 position his best one going forward? How do you envisage him? I think so. I think it's perfect to play in that role. I think he's got incredible physical attributes, but as well he's a very intelligent boy. He learns really quickly. He's very willing. I think he's developing really, really well, and I am very pleased with him. Back on Aubameyang, do you, do you mind... Apologies if you've been asked this before, but how do you compare him with, with Aguero, a, another striker you've worked with who sometimes was criticised for mm. not doing anything except for scoring lots of goals? 
I wouldn't like to compare, but what I can say with Oba is that he's right there with the best goal scorers in this league. And in the last 10 years, you look at his record and what he's done in the game. It's phenomenal. So he's just, in my opinion, up there with the best. Do you feel that the, the, the Bilbao's goal deserves to be rewarded with silverware? When you look at all of the great strikers, they all do have silverware. Yeah, but Harry Kane has scored 30 goals and never won the Premier League, you know? <laughs> So it's a lot of good examples of players that they do phenomenal. Unfortunately, this country is a lot of top teams and only one wins the, the, the league. So you can have everything in life. Can I just ask you very quickly? I mean, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but do, you and Pep, you're both in, in, in clubs where you've got a lot of pressure on and you, you, you relish that pressure because you mm -hmm. want to be operating with quality players, big clubs and whatever else. Do you talk, talk to each other in, Absolutely, he's my friend, he's been a mentor, he's been someone that I spend a lot of hours, days and nights <laughs> with him, I love him and uh, yeah, I always feel great support from him and he knows that I'm here all the time if he needs anything. Does he give you advice, if, you know, do you talk through with him? When you yeah, we talk about, about a lot of stuff. things, yeah. They obviously put me, and I don't, I'm just going to give the details of that, but you know, I'm presuming you're quite supportive of him in the situation he's in and you hope he stays in this league. Yeah. Can, can I just one about, about Laka? Um, he, he said to, when he was struggling, you helped him through. Mm. Um, can you talk a little bit about strikers when they lose their confidence uh, and, and how did he lose his confidence and how did you help him? Well, I just tried to convince him how good he is. I tried to convince him all the, the positive things that he was doing for the team and how this positive thing affected in a really good way to the team as well. You know that, yeah, it's great that you can put that ball in the net, but it's a lot of aspects of the game that you're doing really well. Keep doing those, don't lose them, and the rest will come because you have incredible ability to, to finish. And, um, and his attitude has been so good yeah he was a little bit down because obviously the pressure increases the days go past but then he scored two and two and hopefully many more to come did he lift him? Eh? the goals lifted him i think so obviously i think the the biggest and the most uh, powerful thing for him it was the reaction of his teammates when you really feel that they are behind you they all care about you and they show you that type of uh, reaction he was like wow it was worth it obviously how important is the Europa League to you and um, your squad? Very important because uh, it's a competition that we want to win. It's a competition that it gives us the chance to play in the Champions League next year. You know, and um, you know, it's Europe. It's a big challenge. It's great to go away in the stadiums like we did uh, last week uh, in Athens, and uh, and yeah, it's it's a challenge. Um, just uh, and looking at the match last night between Bayern Munich and Chelsea. Obviously, Bayern putting a very consummate performance against a team that, like you, is a work in progress. It was a very complete performance by a team at the top of European football. Would you encourage your players to, to look at a team and players and a game like that and say, that is where, where we want to be, that is what we can learn from? Well, you learn from those games. Uh, those games are won in the boxes. And with every time Bayern Munich was in the opponent box, boom, it was a goal. And that affects the the story of the game massively, you know, and then they can play and they can, the game management of those teams when they are in those situations is so good and then it makes the opponent look vulnerable, you know, but that's the power of players and clubs that they've been in those situations many times, they need, they know how to handle them and they expose you if you're not at your best. So, so would you ever say to your players, for example, look at what Bayern did last night, I want you to be like that? Yeah, we can use example of like the players, club situation, game moments. Yeah, of course. Okay, last, Thursday, last Thursday, um, the, you said that you weren't happy with the first 10 minutes, but the team showed a lot of character in mm. that game to come away with the win. And on Sunday as well, they fell behind, showed a lot of character before. Mm. And before you arrived, <coughs> in games like that, they almost certainly just lost. <coughs> I don't know, you have to be able to do that in a very consistent way through long periods, you know, to establish whether this is a, a theme in your team or not. 
still to see, you know, <laughs> we will see in the reactions then the things that are going to happen in the next few weeks, how we react, but hopefully it's a trend that is going upwards, that they believe that they can always change the situation and improve it and, and convince them to try to maintain to do that. Sorry, my last question is not actually about the game or, or necessarily Arsenal. We've seen matches in Italy play behind closed doors because of health reasons. People wondering whether the Euros are going to take place this summer. Are you currently involved in a European competition whereby you don't actually know whether it's going to finish? Yeah, but that's the situation that there is at the moment. It's a bit of panic. We are following what the, the authorities are saying, what the club is leading this process at the moment, the doctor is giving advice all the time, the things that we can do and prevent, and uh, unfortunately we don't know how far this is going to go. Can I ask a couple of things? Um, Mikhail, we, we spoke a lot about Pierre. Do you ever worry at all about the attack relying on his goals and it's now time for the other players to, to step up and, and get to his level? Yeah, we went through that when he was suspended for three games and we had a pretty good response from, from the players. That, uh, that they play on those games. But yeah, long term, if you lose him, obviously the impact is going to be, is, you know, it's very difficult to replace a player of that caliber. But uh, hopefully we can keep him and maintain him and we don't have that issue to resolve. And in terms of, of all the talk that goes around, we saw Alex asked about it, Pierre talked about it. Do you have any concerns about that distracting them as you're fighting in three competitions and, and impacting their performances? Distracting, sorry? The transfer talks around and distracting the players. I don't think. I think he's very used to that and I can't see anything on that. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.